Monday, July 25th, 9.40 a.m. here in the Central Mountain West. Well, folks, look at this. Now, if I remember correctly, when I was in school, they did teach me what north, south, east, and west is. So I've got that principle down. Now, when I translate that knowledge to what I'm seeing here, this is what Dr. Beckwith has been talking about. There you go. And I read an interesting um, paper that to say that the north and south jet streams are mixing, you need a return flow. So what I'm assuming the individual was trying to point out, well, I guess you could have a north and south, but I guess if you don't have a south and north, you don't have a full connection. Well, I think we can put that one to bed because look at here. Let's just uh, bring this up so we can see. Look at this. So it comes down all the way down. This is the southern polar vortex, the jet stream. Look at here. Goes back up, shears off here. This cuts off here. And lo and behold, we get all the way back up here into, again, Canada, North America. And there you have it. So, what do we learn from that lesson is that um, we do have not only a north-south, but we got a south-north. Uh, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And it just continues to build. Now, someone was asking me recently, well, could there be something from outside of the earth influencing this? I, I think the question, the answer would be yes, absolutely. Um, the amount of new papers coming out of where just recently last week, 107 new exoplanets in the Kuiper Belt, 107. Uh, to say that is our solar system somehow immune, uh, a no-fly zone, that no other objects can come into our little space, well, that's a ridiculous assumption to be making. Uh, we're still finding out very much new mysteries about even our solar system and our little neck of the woods here in the galaxy. So absolutely, I do believe so. And I think that this is going to continue to have a um, impact on our weather. We're seeing unusual warmth. And you can see the uh, pressure zone right there on the East Coast. You folks out there, uh, get prepared. You guys are going to be toasting. By the way, if you can, get your own UV meter. Carry it with you. I know it sounds ridiculous, but there's strange things going on. People, we know this. I have bought one and glad I have because I have found that as I have become used to actually now taking the UV reading, I can find days when there is exceptionally high UV, and I can find days when there's exceptionally low. It helps. Uh, I live at 6,000 feet of elevation, so we have to definitely take a little bit more precaution because we are less atmosphere and closer up. So just something to think about. Isn't this something, though, people? Look at this. I mean... This is just, it's almost mesmerizing, is it not? I use the word interesting. Interesting doesn't even begin, I think, to adequately describe. When I look at this and see, number one, the raw power of what our planet is made of and see how this living organism reacts, and then to begin to say, well, what is this saying? Is there climatic climate change coming? 
Well, I believe that in all scenarios, you would have to take that into account. But one thing's for sure, uh, as long as the Internet is up and as long as they keep uh, these type of tools available to us, we're going to continue to track this. We're going to continue to monitor this and we'll continue to see what the effects are. All right. See you all later on.